Okay, so in class we've talked and we're going to be talking about uh, precision accuracy. Uh, once after that discussion, now we can start talking a little bit more about the laws of probability and, uh, and understanding better about what our, what our observations really are and what they really mean. Uh, in the past we talked about uh, error was equal to observe minus true value. Now you can see the difference that I've written here. I've called it random error. The reason I'm writing it random error now, and this is what we're going to go from this time forward, isn't talking about is because uh, total error included everything, included systematic errors, um, if there was any mistakes or blunders within there that we can't really figure out or what it is, it, it included everything. What we're going to assume now is that we've eliminated all mistakes and we've eliminated all the systematic errors. So by doing so, that's left them with just the random error. And then now we talk about error, was talk, uh, with the equation was well, your observed minus your true value, with right here. Okay, so now what we're going to say is your E, your error, is your random error. And so from this point on, when we talk about error, let's always refer to that as being your random error, which is excluding your mistakes and your systematic errors. As we talk about redundancy, which as we get into statistics and figuring this out, uh, this is just something to uh, take note of. Redundancy is just the number of observation, observations that are in excess of the minimum amount needed to determine a certain quantity. So if I want to measure the length of a, of a table, how many times does it take me to measure this length right here? Well, to figure that out, it only takes me one time. Okay, so what if I measured it 10 times then? So now let's look at our equation here to find out what's redundant. So if R then was equal to 10 times we measured it, minus one, like we said, it only takes once to be able to figure out what the length is. So redundancy is then equal to nine. That means we had nine more measurements that were beyond what was really truly needed. But uh, it takes redundancy to be able to create statistics and create true understanding of, uh, of where, the, where the error is in some of these measurements. Now as we get and talk about the, uh, the most probable value, simply put, the most probable value is the mean. That's what it is. You take 10 observations, take the average of all 10 observations, and that's what's going to give you then is the mean. And that is what your most probable value is. Now residual. Residual is taking your most probable value and then subtracting the, uh, any individual observation that we have. So as you follow this... Uh, this, uh, this thing right here. So if you had a line right here and you came up and you had all these different little observations all throughout here, Let's put one more out there, and you figure out that right at this spot this is where your mean is. Okay, so really what this residual is representing is the distance away from the most probable value. So if you had this, uh, this observation right here what it's asking is, is what is this distance right here? That's what your residual is representing. If I had this observation over here, M2, I'm now looking at this distance right there from your mean up to there. So the residual can be either positive or it can be negative, depending on uh, where it lies, whether it's uh, greater or less than the most probable value. So you take a bunch of observations that we have right here. We have um, several... Uh, um, observations and uh, this and this, uh, this little exercise right here and you can tell that we've observed this as it uh, as you see right here uh, the number of times that it's measured here is that we have a hundred times here are the counts so you can see that that it's uh, one to two to three to five whatever it is that you ended up with this uh, observed value this angle right here you're since it's so close we're only dealing with seconds that's all it's showing now in this column right here Okay, so to come up again with what is the most probable value, all it was doing was is summing all the observations, all the observed values, and then dividing them by the number of observations, which gives you a value of 24.9, as you see right here and there, to give you what that most probable value is. Okay, then you can see also then what the residual is. So if you have an observation right here, and we come up with the mean of 24.9, so remember, residual is this minus uh, any individual observation. So that very first one, you're ending up with 24.9, 
minus 19.5, which then is equal to the 5.4 that you see right there. So that's all this chart is saying. So if we had 100 observations, this is what you're going to end up with. So now this just looks like a chart. Well, what does that really show and represent? That's kind of, uh, you know, kind of hard to really see what we're looking at. So let's, uh, let's do a little, uh, uh, you know, talking about what that is. So if you have a certain range, range is the max minus the minimum. That's what you're going to end up with. So if you look back at that data, the maximum we had was 30.8 30 seconds, and the minimum was that first observation we had at 19.5 seconds. So you had a range of 11.3 seconds. Now let's look at this right here. This is a graph or, uh, uh, of what we just did, of those 100, 100 observations. So there's a couple ways to, to create this. You can either use a histogram, which are just a bunch of rectangles showing uh, the count, the number of observations that fall within that, uh, within that range of, uh, of residual. So you see down here we're talking about the residual now. Or you can use a frequency polygon, which is just uh, you know going from one inflection point to the next to the next. Or what we have is called a normal distribution curve. A normal distribution curve, that's generally what we're going to be using, what we're going to be talking about. What that is representing is, is this represent this whole thing right here. Remember the residuals, it's, it's comprised of the most probable value minus any observation. So it's taking every observation in here and then measuring what the residual is of every single one of those away from the most probable value. And when we do this, look how it, look how it turns out. It's a nice parabolic curve right here. How awesome that is. It's just, that is what we're going to be using and calling a normal distribution. That's what in surveying, we're going to consider most of, uh, like all of our measurements to can be considered, is that it follows the distribution of normality. It is normal, meaning that no matter how many uh, observations we're going to have, based upon the, the uh, most probable value, the residuals are going to show in this pattern. So when we talk about laws of probability, we're going to start talking about this. The first one is, is that there's more often than not that the residuals are small. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind is we talk about these residuals. I wonder why we're talking about residuals and not errors anymore. Well, let's look at this right here. We said error was equal to this right here. And we said the residual was equal to this. Do you see the similarities inside there? Because the true value is not known, we can't use it anymore. So guess what we end up using? We end up using the most probable value. And then instead of computing error, if we don't know the true value, we can't know the true error, we now compute the residual because that is, an, that is a value that we can compute. So if you look back to right here, that's why we're using residual here. We're not using error. We have to compute and talk about the, the residual. So it's the residual. But the residual is basically aligning itself as to consider what we're going to be calling the error, the random error. All right, so now on, uh, let's talk about the, the, the amount of residuals. More often than not, small residuals are, are going to occur. Those are most probable. Large residuals, on the other hand, are less probable. And then we ask, you know, well, how is that? Uh, what are we talking about? If this is your normal distribution curve, this is your mean right here in the middle. This line right here, you know, every one right here represents a distance away from the, from the most probable value, from the mean. This distance right here is what your residual is. Can you see that the area under the curve right here? This is where your small residuals lie. So that's going to say that most more often than not, this is, this is all your observations are going to fall within a certain area. But then if you have a really large residual, look at the amount that's right here. Not very many whether it's positive or negative, that residual value may be. Okay, then the last thing to talk about as you look at this graph here is that positive and negative residuals, they happen with the same frequency. And this is what we're saying is to be considered to be normal. So now you look back here of our, uh, our histogram. This is another way to, to look at that histogram, but with numbers. You can see that uh, here's the intervals. And here's the number of residuals that fell within the intervals. 
And so you can see that there's hardly any, any. And you see how it goes up and come down over those 100 observations. Right here's the most. And look at the amount of residual right here. So you can relate it back to here. This is the smallest amount of residual that was right there, and you had 14 observations. Between this one right here, 12, 11, 10. And then you can see that uh, the larger the amount, the larger the number was right here, and right here is where you had the fewest. So again, proving again that as we take multiple observations, if you do our, our statistical analysis on this, you're going to end up with a normal distribution. And that's basically because we've gotten rid of all mistakes, we've gotten rid of all systematic errors, which allows us to end up with a normal distribution.